clicked it. Yay! All right. Sorry about that. For some reason, YouTube's just being really weird lately. So, hey, it's been a long time. I wish this met the return of, like, regular live streams. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But I purchased a watercolor snacks box, I want to say, for, like, 50% off. And I meant to grab all the links for you guys, and I have not yet. So Watercolor Snacks is put out by Art Snacks. I've reviewed Art Snacks in the past. I reviewed Watercolor Snacks in the past. And you can tell it's a Watercolor Snacks because it's got the Watercolor Snacks tape. And I'll pull it up. I don't have any affiliation whatsoever with Art Snacks or Watercolor Snacks. Um, it's just fun to review art supplies for you guys sometimes and it's fun to review watercolor stuff I did not so this is like a quarterly thing it's seasonal uh, and it comes with some live stream sessions led by a different artist Brianna Boyd so dread pirate dread pirate Brie on Instagram if you guys are interested in that um, it is $89 per quarter, and I think I got it at a 50% off. There's a good enough discount that I was like, yeah, that sounds good. So, hey, uh, what? I think your audio is clipping. Can you make sure it's going in through your lapel mic? I mean, check yes, to see if it's yes. Clipping. Also, I Sorry. can't hear any music. Oh, on your end, you can't hear any music? I don't know what that means. On the stream, I can't hear I any understand. Music. Why don't you come troubleshoot that for me real quick okay. uh, so the music should be playing I even turned on desktop audio but it's not showing that um, but remember we're using the Bluetooth speakers now because this computer's speaker drivers are borked so I don't know if that it's affects irrelevant. the music for the um, stream no it doesn't okay I did plug in the mic is it still clipping can you get rid of that menu yeah of course sorry always technical difficulties yeah, so you're clipping uh, Lower the my oh, mic. That kind of clipping. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, sorry about that. I know I'm loud. It's been a while. I forgot how loud I am. Uh, what? What you need? Uh, and you're playing music? Yes. I should be. Um, hmm. I don't know if it's set to loop. It doesn't matter. I don't know why it's not going through, but... Sure. No music for the stream. Sorry. No music this time, y'all. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of reiterate since I was interrupted with some troubleshooting. So this is a quarterly box. That means it should come out four times a year. It's about $89 USD. I don't have any affiliation with them. But uh, if you guys enjoy somewhat random art supplies, this might be your jam. Let me... Uh, my YouTube, the website has been acting really weird for me lately, and it's still acting really weird for me. So if I'm slow to respond in chat, that's why. And uh, YouTube Studio is throwing a check the video resolution error because apparently it is too low or, or yeah, something. It's, it's not widescreen. Do you not have the canvas set to a widescreen? I'm gonna go grab my glasses because I feel like I can't see. And let you take a look at it real quick. Not sure if you can change it now that you're in the middle of the stream. You didn't um, notice that it wasn't set up right? I did not notice that, no. I Hello, stream. That uh, it's probably not the end of the world if it's not widescreen. I don't know why Becca ran off, but she did. If you can't fix the resolution, we're just going to have to roll with it. No, there's no way to change it while it's live. Okay. All 
All right, sorry about that. Uh, I guess you heard him. So unfortunately, the resolution is not ideal this time. We're just gonna roll with it, and in the future, I'll get that fixed. Um, I've, I've been using OBS for Zoom calls, but I haven't been live streaming, so it updated and maybe it changed my settings, so I'm sorry about that. So, hey guys, it's good to see you. Though we shall serenade us in the background. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, watercolor <laughs> snacks. Third time's a charm. Watercolor snacks. I've reviewed them before. I've reviewed art snacks stuff before. No affiliation with them. It is a quarterly watercolor focused subscription box. It's $80, $89 full price, but I got it at a deal because when it comes to this kind of stuff, I don't pay full price anymore because I just don't want to. Um, the selling point of this besides the four to five full size, they say premium art supplies will be the judge of that tonight, is that you also get some uh, like two to three instructional live streams led by another artist and illustrator, Brianna Boyd. So Dread Pirate Brie, I don't know why. That's a tongue twister for me. They also offer access to a private online community, but I am way too shy for that. So um, if you are interested in accruing art supplies with accompanying tutorials and a community, which sounds awesome, that could be a good option for you. For me, it's often not the best deal just because I don't make full use of all of the things that come with it. But I do think that if you were to watch and participate in the live streams, and if you were to join the community, it probably would make it worth the price tag. Um, and it's supposed to have a $100 USD total retail value. Generally, Art Snacks is pretty dang good about that. It was Sketchbox. That was not the best about that. So I think I dropped the link in for you guys. Did it ever go through? It did go through, good. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and- Can you check the audio real quick again? What do you, at least I got through the spiel. Uh, What's up? Just talk and make sure it doesn't enter the red. Okay, I know I'm, I'm loud well, and- Talk as you were earlier. I'm gonna try to, but I have to get out of my own head to do that. It's like when somebody's like, a tell a funny joke, and you're like, what? Joke? What, is, what is joke? No, I don't know joke. It doesn't look like it's clipping. I think Paula was just sensitive to it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And I, I am loud, and I, I know I have a bit of a, I don't know if the word is shrill. I don't like that word, but I know I have kind of a grating voice sometimes. So it does tend to like, like when I'm editing my own videos, I'll be like, oh, I wish I had a different voice, but I don't. So um, I'll try to like gentle it a little bit because I know it can be kind of loud. Okay, so I've only had this for maybe a couple of days and I am impressed so many of you guys can make it both on so, such short notice and on a Friday evening. I really appreciate it. I miss doing live streams with you guys. Um, my mom, did I tell you guys this story? I think I did. It's just, it was a long time ago. My mom gave us the wedding gift of painting our house for us and it's very generous of her but she is insistent that she physically paint it and that we buy everything but we don't paint it but that we drop what we're doing to help her with like different painting things so it's been going on for a really really long time all right so that is the big reveal that is inside the box and that's why i don't do live streams is she brings her sister who is starting to develop something very similar to dementia so we have to have the tv on for her so she's engaged and entertained and as you guys can imagine that's not the best streaming situation so i've just been waiting to do streams until that gets wrapped up sorry <laughs> all right so inside this this doesn't i gotta say y'all like this doesn't feel like 89 dollars but we will we will let we will wait for that okay so that is our box basil might want that or bowie might want that. No, I, I did, I'm sorry, I didn't take you wrong. Like, I, I have to listen to my own voice a lot when I'm editing. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I got kind of shrieky there. So I, to me, it's like something I know is a problem, but I need to remind myself to work on it more. This, yeah, honestly, the sound drivers on this computer are all messed up. All right, let's, they are because the speakers, the regular speakers don't oh, work with this computer hardware. anymore. That's not the drivers. Well, the audio with this computer is a disaster right now. 
Okay, so we received a Strathmore, and when I say received, paid for, but I did only pay 50%, so, you know, uh, <laughs> Strathmore watercolor book. This is their, I want to say their cellulose paper, but it might be their, I, they do have um, their 500 series is uh, yeah it's 400 series there we go so this is their cellulose paper but it's it's nice it's not my favorite to paint on but it's nice to ink on if you like a textured paper i'm gonna not read the menu until the end we're gonna save that okay so now that i'm getting into it it's starting to feel more like 89 bucks worth of stuff so it being an arts in the art snacks family we get a candy I think I tried to avoid any spoilers for this box and they did send me some emails and I wanted to wait to kind of go over those with you guys um, I'm not gonna like show the behind the scenes tutorials I'm not that person uh, but I did you know want you guys to kind of get a feel for if this is a good fit for you or something you might be interested in I, I did see that they were doing an exclusive palette with Van Gogh so just a watercolor palette in and of itself already makes it kind of worth it then we also have three brushes. Ah, okay. Oh, all right. So we have, it's a king art, but it is a dagger. I haven't worked with a dagger before. We also received a Zen brush and we also received a Cotman. It's either a Cotman or a Windsor Newton. It's, I mean, Obviously, Cotman is owned by Windsor Newton, but I mean in terms of the line, I think this is the Windsor Newton branding now. And this is a synthetic. So all three are synthetics, but I do appreciate that we received three brushes, that they're by different brands, so it gives you a chance to kind of try out some other brands, because that's one of the things I liked about Art Snacks to begin with, was that you would get a variety of art supplies, and sometimes that would give you access to things you didn't have access to before. And then we also have a... Sakura Microperm, so this should be a pigment-based fine liner that should be water, water safe once dry. We also received two Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. I wonder what Art Snacks used to like to do was kind of randomize what colors people would get unless they're doing a themed thing. So I'd be inter I like these colors together. These are nice like secondary contrast colors, so they're going to like really vibrate scintillate on the eyes so that's cool we got cobalt green and we got pale geranium lake and these are both going to be india ink based so they're going to be water soluble and then when they dry they're not going to move anymore we also received a roll of tape and a sticker and since we have kind of unboxed everything we can actually talk about the menu so Van Gogh watercolor pocket box, limited edition and art snacks exclusive. Set of 12, $42.95 retail. So the smart thing about exclusives is it's not like I can go on Dick Blick and find this exact thing and get the price. The best I can do is comparable, which makes it hard to argue with the price they give. And that, and it's an exclusive. So they worked with the company for that. You can't you can't go on Dick Lick and find, you know, that exact thing. So I always think it's smart when these kind of companies partner to do exclusives because, A, it's a reason to subscribe because you're not going to be able to get it anywhere else. And, B, it's not like you can argue with the price tag. Other two brushes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, the other two brushes are rounds. The Zen is a size four, and then the, ah, okay, the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Synthetic Sable is a size zero, so it's like a fine liner. And then this is the Van Gogh. Oh, so techni technically we got three brushes today because it also, and four, can't count four brushes because it comes with a size six travel brush and what's kind of neat with these is they have this thing here at the end which you can hook underneath the palette so if you want to clean out your mixing surface you can and it says van gogh the quality brand 
So set at 12, 14, or 42.95 retail. Proudly produced in Holland, Van Gogh watercolors feature brilliant transparent color with a high tinting strength. Most colors are rated with the highest degree of light fastness, meaning they will not fade for 100 plus years under museum conditions, which who, who of us live in museum conditions? Thanks to their purity and uniform, but that's, you know, all companies refer to it that way, so I can't blame them. I'm just, I don't live in museum conditions. Thanks to their purity and uniform viscosity, these watercolors are easy to work with and easy to mix. And I'm going to swatch these for you guys. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this as a live stream is to have a chance to hang out with you guys and demonstrate and swatch stuff. I love the custom black palette. I think that's really cool. I can't tell if this is supposed to be a metallic set or if it's just a unique color selection. I think it's just a unique color selection, which is cool because those of you who've been watching the Student Gregory Showdown, y'all know how I feel about metallic watercolors. I love a good one, but it is very cheap for companies to just kind of poop one out. Okay, so next is the Strathmore 400 series soft color water co soft cover watercolor art journal. It is a staff favorite. So eight inches by 5.5, 5 $25, $55, $25.55 retail. <laughs> I like forgotten how to talk. Meet the wet media sketchbook of your dreams. It's okay. This, oh, all right, my thing with this paper is it doesn't take layers super well. So it's fine for like travel sketches. It's comparable, if not cheaper in price than a moleskin. And it performs better, in my opinion, than the moleskin watercolor. So it's not bad. I don't mean to, like, dunk on it. I just, it's not my, I, I mean, I like Canson XL. So, you know, what do I know? This flexible journal is filled with 48 pages of 300 GSM cold-pressed paper made for watercolor. The cover is a velvety soft dark brown. It does have that, like, um, rubberized thing going on, which I wonder with. Those of you who play, like, video games, controllers that have that, like, soft touch rubberized grip, those are starting to rot and uh, slough off and become like a sticky disaster. And I I wonder if that happens with these or if they do something. That would be like my nightmare. It's a, ugh, that's awful. Hopefully not. Um, the cover is a velvety soft dark brown and the durable binding allows this book to open wide and lay flatter. King Art Original Gold 9800 Series Gold Tacalon Brush. Now, I don't know about you guys, but most of the time, if I see King Art, it's on Zoo Lily. And I actually have those King Art watercolors to review for you guys. So after I, I do all this switchy swatching, I ought to put this with that so that, you know, like would like. Um, I don't know. It's just satisfying to the brain meats to review things with the other things from that company. Dagger size, 3 eighths, $11.99 retail. I mean, yeah, maybe, but I wouldn't. Not for a synthetic, not for golden tackle on. King Art brushes are designed with the artist in mind, built to survive years of steady use. Their original gold brush has soft synthetic filaments ideal for all mediums. The dagger tip can create a variety of effects and is great for painting clean edges. That's probably true. I've never, I've used cat's tongues, but I've never used a dagger. Then the Winsor Newton Professional Watercolor Synthetic Sable Brush. Round size zero, $12.99 retail. Winsor & Newton has created the best mix of synthetic bristles to mimic a natural sable hair. This unique blend allows color to flow evenly across your surface. From its ergonomic handle, to its excellent color carrying capacity, this brush is truly innovative. In the, in the larger sizes, this handle is probably ergonomic, but at this small size, I just want to like wrap some tape around it to bulk it up a little bit so it doesn't bite into the hand. And then we have our Royal Lanical Zen Series 83 watercolor brush. So I did try the Zen brushes for acrylics and I did not care for them. I have not tried them for watercolor. So that's cool. That gives me a chance to actually try them out. And they carry these at Michael's. Round size four, 349 retail. See, that's more in the ballpark than I'm used to for synthetic brushes. With a blend of synthetic and natural hair. Oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of like the silver black velvet. The Zen brush from Royal and Langnickel perfectly combines softness and strength 
It's also super resilient. The metallic handle can soak in water without cracking. Yeah, because it's, it's plastic. With, it's plastic. Sakura Microperm Pen, size 3, 292 retail. From, di from paper to diamonds, sorry, from paper to diamonds, the Sakura Microperm Pen can write on almost any surface thanks to its waterproof permanent ink. Have you guys noticed that it's really hard to write on washi tape with Sakura and, I mean, yeah, Sakura Microns? I wonder if the Microperm is any better about that. It's the per, and they included washi tape. It's the perfect pal for your watercolors. Two Faber Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor markers, 650 retail each. The Albrecht Durer marker gives you unbeatable definition and control with watercolor painting. It features highly pigmented, light, fast color, and two different nibs, brush and bullet. Blend your strokes with water to create vibrant watercolor washes. And then. Do they mean put water on the tip of the marker? You can. You, 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 you can. You, they or mean they mean with a brush, brush. but okay. you can. But it's going to cause. So with these kind of watercolor markers, they will suck up some of that water yeah, of and cause blow blow back. So you can do it. I'm just kind of about doing that myself. Uh, Art Snacks Washi Tape, limited edition, Art Snacks exclusive, $2.99 retail. Add some flair to your paintings with Art Snacks Washi Tape. This tape makes it easy to create crisp borders for your watercolor pieces and can help keep paper from warping. It's easily removable and will not damage your surface. I, I know you guys have heard me talk about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so I have found, in my opinion, the best washi tape for like little watercolor paintings it doesn't tear your paper and the water doesn't soak under it and it doesn't like lift up when water is added to your paper and that would be mt brand washi tape i've tried a bunch of different washi tapes and i was kind of of the opinion that they're all kind of i love washi tape but like for watercolor that they're all kind of eh. so i would use the cheap stuff this stuff really does it doesn't tear my paper and the water doesn't seep under it if you get a good seal on it. So for all those watercolor bookmarks I've been working on, of course, I don't have any handy. Um, this stuff is great. And you can get it in different sizes. And you can get it all cute and fancy too. But since I'm just using it to tape down edges, I just use the white or the black. Okay, so we have gone through their menu. On the other side is a technique, which is pretty cool. So we have a mini tutorial for scoring technique. Since it's now officially spring, we're feeling motivated by energetic colors, which is why this quarter's box is inspired by plants. When painting plants, you can achieve perfect leaf veins with this scoring technique. And they demonstrate that with the Zen, which is cool. So they're tying in the materials into the technique. I appreciate that. And they also show how to do it with the dagger. But you can also use the this thing here on the travel brush to do the same thing so i guess we're gonna have to try this out so what i'm going to do i'm gonna move these off the table for the time being i'm gonna go get a cup of clean water and some paper towels and we can actually start swatching the goodies that came in our watercolor snacks and I apologize that we don't have any like nice elevator music while I go do those things. We're working on it. This foot fell like Bowie. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'm looking forward to trying out the Zen brush because if I like A, that's a good price point. And I'm always looking for affordable but good watercolor brushes that I can bring to my classes. So I'm hoping it's a good one. Now the King Art, and the Cotton, the Wat, the the King Art and the Windsor Newton Professional prices. Those are a little. I'm a little sus, but that's not necessarily Art Snacks' fault. That's kind of probably the manufacturer's fault. So I'm gonna go grab that cup of water. Bow. 
You, Indy Kitty. I miss lives. I'm so happy to be here. I'm really glad that I can do this one. I've got two big art kits that I bought at Christmas time that I still want to live stream with you guys. I've just been waiting for things to settle down. And speaking of, congrats Jill on moving and getting moved in. <laughs> Alright, so I am going to start with the special Van Gogh watercolors. I feel like I should probably record which ones are in this set. So let me pop open a notepad. So we have Azo Yellow Light, and they're pretty simply wrapped just in paper. I like that. I'm making my mom a tiny junk journal scrapbook thing for Mother's Day. That's really cool. That's a good idea. And it has the color number. So we have, I'm not going to record the light fastness or the opacity info, I'm sorry, but three plus signs of light fastness and it is semi opaque. So this is Azo Yellow Light and that is 268. I really like these little Van Gogh palettes like they're they're very cute they're very serviceable they're very compact so it's been a while too since I reviewed um, anything Van Gogh fortunately I am also recording this to my desktop unfortunately it's in the wrong aspect ratio because I am so smart so super smart pyrrole orange because I could maybe like edit this into a standalone thing and re-release it as part of the student grade showdown. Get that dual use out of it. Unfortunately, I cannot time lapse right now the unwrapping part, nor can I do the cute little stop motion thing I usually like to do. So again, we have three plus signs of light fastness and it is a Give me a sec, I need something to compare it against. Everybody has their own system. No, are any of them other than the yellow? Okay, so that's semi-transparent, so that means it's transparent. How's y'all's week been? Oh, we have crap black hell. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's the, um, it might, looks like it might be crap black hell. I love it. That's how my week's been. Matter Lake Light. <laughs> Again, we have three plus signs of light fastness and it is transparent. Did I mention that these also have custom half pans? I love when a company does that. So Van Gogh is the student grade of, oh, I want to say Lucas, but I don't think it's Lucas. I love how my brain was just like, nope, 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 we're not doing this today, Becca. Nope, nope, can't have it. It is the student grade line of something I have reviewed before that isn't Schmenka or Dance. <laughs> Yay. And happy early Mother's Day to you guys. Those of you who are mothers, have mothers, are going to celebrate tomorrow for your own reasons. Next we have Hooker Green Deep. I said tomorrow, Sunday, Becca. Come on, girl. Three plus signs of light fastness and transparent. 
Thank you, Royal Talons and Rembrandt. Oh, thank you guys so much. Much appreciated. You guys are a lifesaver. I had to stream all my unboxings. And then <laughs> nobody wants that. That would take everybody, it, it would take me less time and it would take y'all more time. So we have quinacridone purple red, three plus signs of light fastness, semi, or I'm sorry, fully transparent. Yep, yep. Joseph said the last live stream I have on record was 12 321. It has been that long. And Cindy loves Van Gogh. I think they're better student from the big manufacturers. You know what? That would be interesting. Now I really want to include this as part of the student grade showdown because I've been reviewing a lot of Chinese manufactured uh, student grade stuff that some of it I really like and some of it's really just <laughs> really bad. Um, so it really would be, now that I have like some more experience with student grade, it'd be really cool to compare this against those. So next is Turkish blue or turquoise blue. And it is three plus signs of light fastness and it is transparent, 522. Yep, Rembrandt is their professional line. Thank you guys. I don't know. Okay, so usually if I am recording, what I will do is I'll make my notes in a document and then uh, everything is kind of like a mix of live reaction plus written notes and script because as I'm getting older, the ADHD is getting worse, which, huh. so um, I'm more, more and more reliant on, you know, writing notes. I misspelled turquoise, but that's okay. I'm just trying to get the colors that are in this set because I figure because this is a custom set, well, a custom selection of colors. And I think they sell the palettes themselves empty. Like I think Dick Blick sells them empty. Next is Rose, two plus signs of light fastness and semi-transparent, not fully transparent. But it does not that I have seen. Oh, it does. Oh, it does. <laughs> it has the pigment info. Bravo, Van Gogh. Now I'm gonna have to like hold on to these so I can grab the pigment info for later since I'm gonna roll this into a, a full-blown student grade showdown. Not, Bravo, not. Bravo, Van Gogh rhymes pretty well. Yeah, right? Bravo, Van Gogh. I always appreciate when they make that pigment info handy. Like even if they're using pigments that are kind of sus, I always appreciate it because it is getting increasingly difficult to dig for this kind of stuff because of the way Google sorts information. And Dawn said Rembrandt belonged to Royal Towns. Yup. All right. Next up is Sat Green. This is this should be a pretty color selection. This kind of reminds me of the Core High Chroma selection. You got to Louisiana it up, huh? Bravo, Van Gogh. G-E-A-U-X, huh? Mm -hmm. You're not going to go full? Full Louisiana? Then permanent red deep. What is, I think the last Van Gogh product I've reviewed was the dust colors. Kabocha sent me hers because they just were not her jam. And I ended up really liking them because they've got that like neat super granulation thing. <laughs> thanks, thanks Kabocha, you got me stuck on the super granulation thing. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that I'd written down the color name. So that's permanent red deep. I'm trying to read it for you guys and then unwrap it. Well, read it, write it down and then unwrap it. Like get a rhythm going. Oh, oh, they also have the light fast info. Their, their wrappers are full of information. Good on them. Permanent yellowish green. And their paper, which I appreciate. What's the difference between semi and fully transparent? I do ink and pencil work, not watercolor. That is, a, okay. J the, the faces and the thinking aren't about you. Different companies will call different things transparent 
so it's kind of like transparent would be you could fully see through it if you did like a line of ink and then paint it on top of it with a color you should see that line of ink without any distortion without any opacity kind of clouding it up that would be fully transparent semi-transparent it might obscure the ink a little bit semi-opaque it would make the ink look cloudy opaque in an in a ideal situation would completely obscure the paint but since watercolor is a transparent medium and gouache is the opaque version of that you're not generally going to get as much opacity with an opaque watercolor as you do with an opaque gouache and if you want to get like really technical about it it really has to do with the pigments that they're using so like a quinacridone would be more transparent because the particle size is much finer whereas like ultramarine blue which is or yellow ochre would be more opaque because the particle size is larger permanent that was a good question blue violet i just wanted to think about how to answer it because different companies will kind of oh and it is two stars of light fastness and fully transparent different companies kind of have their own scales for how transparent or how opaque something is I usually get confused between semi-transparent and semi-opaque yeah to me that's when that line starts getting kind of wibbly wobbly I don't really for most companies I don't really understand why they're making the distinction between the two because often I can't see a difference between the two and then finally, our final color is phthalo green with a pH. And I'm gonna set these aside and go through them later and add the pigment info. Hey Bugsy. Bugsy said, what I've seen of Van Gogh's dust colors makes me go wild. Yeah, I might get suckered into super granulation too. So I'm, I'm like the super granulation apologist here on YouTube, I guess, because my use case is very different from a lot of the other artists who are painting things that are meant to be displayed in the home and archival, whereas I want that super granulation for my comic pages, which are going to go in a portfolio and like no one, well, not no one, but you know what I mean? Like very different use cases. But I will, just for the sake of like being a good, a good art advocate, I will say that a lot of super granulating colors not all but a lot have a lot of light fast issues because like the supervision ones the ones that I really like that have like the crazy color splits they're using a dye based watercolor for the less of the less granulating of the two okay so this is the Strathmore 400 series so it is a cellulose paper your tip off is it says acid free it has a cold press texture Oh, they've changed the texture. Did they? No. What? So something I don't like about these double-sided books, and this is a personal preference, is that you you get two different paper textures, which some people like. But in my instance, with Strathmore's cold, uh, cellulose paper, is I don't like their cold press texture all that much. However, the back side of the paper, no, it alternates. Oh. I don't want to complain too much. I don't want to be the salt queen. So I'm just going to swatch my watercolors and not complain too much. So we're going to we're going to do the thing that we do. Do you guys want me to put some uh speaking of do the thing that we do. Do you guys want me to put some alcohol marker down on this? and test for opacity or, um, cause I'm gonna do a student grade show down with this anyway. Um, would you rather I just hold on to it and then when I swatch it on the cotton rag paper, do it like that. I will, however, go ahead and spritz it with water, give it a chance to activate. That is a pretty color selection though, I like that. Cindy says, I got a set of jelly gouache for playing around with. I want a room painted in phthalo blue, impression blue. That would be like being under the ocean. That could be really cool. 
And Bugsy said, the supervision ones made me go crazy too, despite their faults. I could see myself getting one of their sets too. I love a good gimmick. Me too! I'm going to just swatch these. Since for the student grade showdown, I'm going to re-swatch. I'm going to use footage from this, but I'm also going to re-swatch them um, on cotton rag paper. And I will go ahead, I guess, and try out the dagger. Well, sometimes a little salt is good. I just have a tendency to be very salty. And then I get stuck. It's that ADHD. I tend to get stuck in emotional ruts. And I'm hanging out with you guys. I'm here to have fun. I don't want to spoil that by prejudging something. It's kind of neat. I've never used a dagger before, so I don't know if synthetic is the best use or what um sometimes just given the price synthetic is more than fine you better have to try out their leaf painting tutorial i've definitely got my own way of painting leaves but that doesn't mean i can't learn something new Ooh. Something I am liking that it is not picking up on, but it will when I when I do the student grade showdown version, is that there's a little bit of granulation to these. And I have been reviewing so many AliExpress watercolors that are not even using pigments, they're using dye, so there's no granulation. And they're very, very cheap that I am really excited to see. See that granulation. This is a nice color selection so far. This pink is a little, little weird, but it's also, ooh, it's kind of pretty. It's almost like a cobalt violet. And these were fairly quick to activate. My problem is that with synthetics, synthetic brushes I always have tr difficulty with water control and I tend to get too much water on the page or too much water on the paints themselves but I have friends who love synthetic brushes so I think it's just a, a me thing these are like almost 80s or 90s colors it's like right on that cusp what we're missing is like a cobalt turquoise so i swatched on one of the less textured pages it was just i never paint on the front page i don't know why i think because uh in sketchbooks when i would draw on the front page it always get ruined so i would just not draw on it to protect the pages behind it and I just kind of carry that over to all my sketchbooks but uh, this has less texture it's fine I like that um, of course to be fair we're gonna have to swatch on a more textured page at some point so I feel like the, the bulk of the cost of this box is coming from the custom palette which I feel like that's fair um let me get caught up on chat I'm waiting for the uh, I'm fine with waiting for the showdown for the opacity check but it's up to you speaking of uh, a gimmick did Yinmin blue ever become more available that is a kabocha question uh, I wonder how the Lucas studio will fare against this in Cotman. I know Sennelier and Schmincke student lines but what else besides Grumbacher hmm dang it I just had, I, yeah, you're right, with the Grumbacher Academy. Uh, I've reviewed a lot of the more, the Western, the more commonly available Western brands. 
Uh, I reviewed the Lucas Studio a while back, and my problem was I thought it was too opaque. I couldn't get it to layer the way I wanted it to. But if you're like a one and done watercolor painter where you do like one layer or two layers top, so like a lot of brush letterers or card makers, you might like it because it does have that pop of color. But uh, I found that their professional line, the Lucas, uh, what is it, 1862? very similar and i've noticed that german watercolors in general tend to be more opaque than i'm used to so that could just be like a preference there that i don't share uh, i've seen that schminka might be re-releasing their line again and also some smaller vendors like a gaio lapis lazuli is becoming popular again too i'm gonna swatch the abrectere and these are India inks, so instead of using like earth pigments, they're using India ink to get the color. The plus side to that is that they're gonna be way more light fast. The downside, in my opinion, is you don't necessarily get the granulation. I feel like the color, like, and this is how I feel about the ink tents as well. It's just an India ink thing with me. The color feels kind of flat. So that was our cobalt green, kind of leaning in with our 80s colors. And then here is our pale geranium lake. So you guys can see, especially, okay, so I not I don't love cellulose papers. They're not my favorite favorite, but for watercolor markers, cellulose papers, I find, tend to play better with watercolor markers than cotton rag papers do. I'm going on a trip soon, so maybe I'll bring this with me and try to do some like nature sketches or something. Although this is not the palette I would put together to paint Arkansas. So that was our two, and something I like that is an improvement is I have found with these that the bullet tip and the brush tip are sometimes different shades because the ink flow isn't the same to both. These seem to be basically the same color. So that leaves our micro perm. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to let it dry for like 10 minutes. Bowie thinks it's dinner time. He gets fed almost like gets paid he gets fed at 7 30 so he's a little early here next is the zen with their what do we call this the flat edge for scraping and i'm just trying to remove the sizing out of it Indy is using Fabriano watercolor paper to draw on. I love the sound of drawing on the texture. And yes, the Fabriano Studio is really fun to ink on. It takes ink really well. Okay, the more opaque the watercolor is, the harder it is to layer, but I love them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's something that I really like about watercolor is that there is such a diversity in the paints and how different manufacturers manufacture the paints and like even different countries, how they produce paints and what binders they use and what pigments they use. Okay, so this is the Zen. It is a plastic handled brush, which does mean it's not gonna absorb water and crack. It's all right, actually. It's I didn't realize it was a, a mixed synthetic with uh, natural hair in it. So I would definitely be down to try this in a larger size, especially at that price point. And then we have our Winsor & Newton Professional. At a size this small, it's going to be really hard for me to tell if this is a good round. Now, I would say, for me, not so much. I usually use small natural hair brushes like this to do like eyelashes and stuff on comic pages, but 
as I'm kind of doing the corkscrew, the hairs on the brush were splaying. So I was getting railroading, which you might want, but it tells me that the brush isn't as flexible as I would like or as snap and resilient as I would like. That doesn't make it bad. I will also use um, synthetic watercolor brushes like this to do white gouache. Um, so this might be a better fit for gouache or heavier bodied watercolors. No, you're fine. Um, I was kind of, Paolo, I was kind of thinking that too, but I don't, about lapis lazuli and, because uh, it, it, it can only be mined in one specific cave is what I'd been told. So it's already really scarce. But I don't know enough about the topic to be able to talk about it. And I don't want to come, I like, like as the person streaming, I don't want to come across like, I know a lot about this thing that I don't. No, I don't think most Americans are, are proud of that. No. Don't start about different artists and art styles using the paints. You, what? I'm not allowed to? I'm not allowed to go into the spiel? I'm gonna try out the travel brush that came with the Van Gogh set now and also wash off some of the watercolor that got onto my hand. I love that though. I really do. Because there's something for everybody. It's just finding that something. So this is very much a synthetic. It is also a plastic bodied brush. If you're used to the weight, this says this isn't sorry. This is very light in the hand, which could be a good thing if heavier brushes fatigue your hand. Could be a bad thing if you're used to that balance. But it's meant to be a travel brush, and it was a free brush, so. It's golden tackle on, not overly stiff. It's fine. My recommendation with this is save it for like plain air travel sketch painting. Don't necessarily, I wouldn't recommend trying to paint something with a bunch of layers with it because it's stiff enough that it's going to scrape those prior layers off. And he does this every night. No, you're you're fine. I I I do I I do launch into it. Uh, so I'm gonna let this dry and just kind of chat with you guys, and and maybe we'll take a look at the washi tape while we wait. Um, so a while back, I actually contacted YouTube because I got kind of frustrated with. Uh, I have like, I, I'm happy with my subscriber count, but my view count is low. So I contacted YouTube to see if there was an underlying reason that maybe my videos weren't getting recommended to my subscribers. And they had me go through my analytics and they showed me that most of my views are coming from Google searches, which is kind of cool. So that means a lot of people who are watching a single video are not necessarily familiar with what I do or uh, like, you know, other things I've done. So I've been trying to make it a point to mention that I'm a watercolor comic artist because, you know, I do think different artists have different needs. If I was doing more realism, like this palette might not be a good fit for, you know, if you're painting like realistic portraits, but that doesn't make it a bad palette. It just means the use case is different. The needs are different. Oh, this does not want to get, and then it starts to tear. Who is their manufacturer? I know there are lots of, you can do bulk orders for custom washi tape from a lot of different vendors, but the design is cute. I'll give it that. I like the design. I'm going to put it on the paper so you guys can see in a minute, but it's like that cheap washi tape. Watch. Okay. So this is the, the empty washi tape. It's a heavier washi tape but you can pull it off the roll very easily because it's a heavier washi tape. It doesn't want to just shred on you. Whereas this, as I was getting it started, it's very thin, it's very adhesive, which the adhesive part could be good, but it wants to like shred on me rather than tearing. So that's the design. 
Let me move it over so you guys can see. Pretty cute. Like label brushes. It depends on which ones you're looking at. I used to use their red handled squirrel brushes, the Blick Master, and I really liked those. That was like 10 plus years ago. We don't live near a Blick anymore, so I don't impulse buy from them as much as I used to. Uh, the Zen line offers good ones that don't make me want to cry for my wallet. Those flat brushes are so expensive, even synthetic. Yup, that is true. And that's one line I haven't tried yet, probably in reference to the Blick ones. Yeah, I, I, I liked what I saw of the Blick watercolor brushes when I was still buying a bunch of them. The squirrel brushes I bought from them held up well, other than somebody chewing on them. He loves huh? He loves squirrel. He loves squirrel, yeah. Which I don't like let him, but he would like jump up on the table to do it. Aw, oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So this is still drying. I do want to also try out their rougher texture without it getting everywhere. So I guess what I will do is I guess I will try out one of their techniques. Now, um, I have not yet checked out any of the live streams that they've included and I haven't checked out any of the tutorials so I'm not speaking to that in this but I do think that that does add value to the total now the online community that's that's a your mileage may vary sort of thing I think it's very clever of them to have an online community because basically you get people who are already paying for the subscription to troubleshoot the problems of other other people who are paying for the subscription so you're getting a lot of free labor but they're not forcing anybody to join so that is a, a you decide you want to do that kind of thing i just think it's kind of clever okay so Lay down a damp wash of base color. Make sure it's wet, but not puddled. And that's gonna be a little challenging for me. I'm gonna try to kind of mimic what they're doing. Now the nice thing about the dagger is we can get these really, really nice. These would be good for painting like loose watercolor flowers. Damp, but not puddled. Okay. With the end of your brush, that's right, we're using it backwards. So grab the other brush. Gently score veins into your paper. Be careful not to press too hard or it'll puncture the paper. So I'm going to follow it down. It does do a good job of scoring it without tearing it. And I don't know if it's showing up too well on this camera, but I can see the lines that it scored. And then while your base is still wet, add another color. Good thing they gave us those mixing surfaces. Let the colors bleed naturally. Nature is all about organic textures. You want this to be wet for the next step. Now you have natural veins in your leaves. You can use this technique for a variety of textures, including tree bark or tall, wispy grass. That's kind of neat. I really do appreciate that they've included like a little, very easy tutorial. Uh, so the neat thing about that is you're gonna have people who have lots of painting experience who may or may not have ever used that particular technique. And then you're going to have people with less painting experience who are learning something new. So I do think that is an added value. I'm really kind of starting to like the deck. Now the problem is since cellulose paper doesn't absorb the water, it all sits on the surface. It can be really challenging to control when things dry.
So I'm trying to work kind of quick with it. But that's fun. I, I appreciate that. I might have to check out their other tutorials. I can be so stubborn. I have all these different watercolor books that look so good. And yet I'll like sit down to start with them. And then I'll be like, oh, but I don't have the right paints. Or, oh, but I'm on vacation. And then I'll never, never get back to it. Kind of fun and relaxing though, I'll give them that. Just the painting leaves with the dagger is kind of fun and relaxing. That's what that brush style is called? Yep. This is my first time playing with a dagger like this too. know what else to say about that so oh we still need to test that out but I have to wait for this to dry yeah uh, so Dawn said I don't want to commit to the MT tape because it, I'm native to Belize and it will be or it is native to Belize I'm sorry and it will be expensive for me and it's I mean in the US it's expensive too. probably not as expensive as it would be for you but it is pretty pricey here uh, oh whoa 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 I if you're gonna use the washi tape on Shizen like you're using it on the back that should probably be okay but if you're using it on the front it will probably tear up the surface because yeah Shizen is really really fragile I started working on volume three of Kara. I've been working on um, the roughs. So get working on it, getting there. And I've been recording a vlog for it. So if you enjoy comic process, I've been working on that. Man, yeah. I, I yeah. Joseph's not wrong about when I look at it, I do struggle to not just see the bad days. But when I look at it, I also see how much, like even though I did have those bad days where it was harder to put the time in, I also just genuinely love working on it. And that's why I've, it's been five years now because I did it last year and I'm probably going to do it again this year. Um, I really love, I'm like one of those people who like loves drawing out lists so it probably falls into that category for me but it's also just a really enjoyable project that i've been working on for a while so while i am thinking about it and literally waiting for paint to dry that's the empty i should test their tape to see how well oh yeah already wants to curl up and look, like Empty doesn't isn't necessarily the end all be all. It's just one of the better ones that I found. If you've got a brand that you like that works well for you, go for it. Okay, give it a little bit of time to dry. It didn't smear. Like I this it's, it's probably being wasted on what I'm going to use it for, but I'm going to use this to label half pans because even permanent markers will sometimes smear when I'm labeling half pans. And then I do want to test out their washi tape. Let's see how well it works as a masking tape. So normally what I would use it for is I would use it to tape something down and give me clean edges. But this is this is a decent little ooh, those two colors when they mix together are pretty. Let's play with that. So I'll try a little bit of 
they do not want to wet into wet mix on this paper and that's kind of my big bummer about cellulose papers is it often doesn't want to like wet it doesn't want to encourage wet into wet blends and then I'll do a little bit of optical I need to start grabbing prices for you guys though and then over here so while we literally wait for paint to dry I'm gonna go over to let's start with Blick should I turn on the um, browser Hopefully I'm doing this correctly. I had everything set up a while back and now everything is not set up. Hopefully, maybe I should have had it set to window. Let me know if, let me know if it doesn't refresh this. Okay, Joseph, you let me know. Thank you. Did it refresh? Still waiting. Because it might just make it a static page and I might have to go to window instead. Like the page itself refreshed, that's not gonna work, okay. Learning things today. Window capture, aha. Okay, there we go, that yeah. is, that's I can, it. I can see you um, scrolling on the page. Oh, it's so huge. Oh, it's so huge, okay. Let me move this so that you guys can see it. I apologize that it is so wide. Okay, so let's look at the pan sets. A brand for serious artists of all levels with an eye for quality, Van Gogh watercolor pan sets are intense, lively, and very transparent with high tinting strength. Every brilliant color in the line features the highest degree of light fastness. Due to their purity and uniform viscosity, Van, whoo, that's a lot. Van Gogh watercolors are extremely easy to mix for washes to produce the subtlest of differences in shade. And we're going to be just looking at, not right now, the 12 color set. So they have two. They have many, but basically, oh, okay, the museum watercolor pocket box which is this like really cute bright orange color that's so cute why, why do more companies not make their art supplies in like fun colors okay 12 colors half pans 41.55 that's pretty close to this set here not the same color selection but i didn't think it would be however the other two 12 sets Sorry, if I'm making you sick, I apologize. Like the National Gallery watercolor pocket box set, that's $29.09. So that's like more than 10 bucks cheaper. And then this set here, the watercolors set of 12, assorted colors is $26.91. And yet the specialty metallic and interference colors in the, the other black box is $52.65. So, Van Gogh, they feel very all over. Now this could be Blick pricing because woof, $79.95 is MSRP, Never mind. So to me, Van Gogh is kind of all over the place with their prices. Like the muted colors is $26.91, the pinks and violets is $26.91, the shades of nature is $26.91, but they typically, MSRP, they typically retail at $42.95 minus the museum watercolor pocket box, which there is no list price for that. So what did, 
what did they said forty two ninety five? That is MSRP. So I I want to say that's fair, but also this Blick price. But also, this is a special color selection, and it seems like Van Gogh charges more for the cute box colors, like that orange box is $41.55, and the black box is $52.65 for interference colors, which are mica-based, which are so cheap to make. But, yes. Anyway, all right, let's look at that Strathmore 400 series. I mean, typically, Art Snacks, is fair with their prices. It's not like Sketchbox where there would be some like who boy going on there. All right, so it kind of falls into this if it's the soft bound journal. I might be able to find this exact product. This is the hard bound one, so no. I wonder if I can't find it. There we go. Now I see it. And what size are you? 8 by 5.5. .5. There we go. 1376 according to Blick. <laughs> But the list price is the list price, $25.55, y'all. $25.55 versus $13.76. I mean, if you've got a locally owned brick and mortar that you like to support, obvious, and you can afford to do so, obviously, support them or consider supporting them. But if not, $13.76, that's like half the price. So I'll give the Van Gogh set a bit of a pass, but the no, I, this is not, this is not 13. I guess I got to start writing down the numbers now. Because that's too big a gap for me to, to like, hand wave and be like, different vendors have different prices. So next, it's the King Art. There, well, maybe Blake has King Art. They do. Okay. Original gold. Someone's now. Oh, have a good evening. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a long time. King Art Original Gold Brushes. What size are we looking at? Oh, it's the dagger. Three eighths. Dagger. Three eighths. Eleven ninety nine versus eleven ninety nine. Okay. See, so that one's, that's fair. I mean, would I pay that? No, absolutely not. But that is the price that King Art is charging. I'm not going to argue that. Windsor Newton Professional Synthetic Sable Brush. Now I want to see what's in the muted color set. And that is the size zero. It doesn't say pointed round, so I guess it's just a round. There we go, zero. $6.94 versus $12.99 retail. That one is going in the, I'm gonna calculate, and, and again, to be, to be fair, they are including tutorials and they are including an online community and different people are going to derive different amounts of value from that. Don't now, Sam. Oh, have a good evening. I'm so glad you were able to swing by and congrats on the move. up buying some more of the Zen series brushes because those are not bad. They have so many. $12.99 versus 
too many. See, I see the synthetic ones. They look the same. It says that they're all synthetic here, but on this thing it says they're a blend of synthetic and natural. I would bet they're the same. And that's a size four. And that is 239. But that's already pre I'm gonna grab it, but to be fair, that's already a pretty cheap price. So that's a dollar difference isn't really something I'm gonna like pull my hair out over. Not that I don't care about saving money, but like sometimes I can get very nickel and dimey with these boxes and I know that bothers some people. And I can understand that because different things cost different amounts of money. Especially if you're not doing the yen conversion right and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so with, with the yen I usually do a uh, dollar for 100 yen. Yeah, and it's... Which is, yeah, it's like... Pretty far away. From right, that. it's like uh, 40 cents to 50 yen now. Well, this price is the same, and they have them on Blick if you want to give them a try. I haven't seen I haven't seen them outside of Japan, so I'm excited that Blick has them, and I'm excited that they write on washi tape without even it didn't like reactivate, it didn't bleed. That's pretty impressive. And then for their washi tape, I'm just gonna go, cause it's a custom thing, I'm just gonna go with their price. And plus $2.99 for washi tape is not unfair. Oh, so I need to find individual markers. They're all the same price. Blick lists them at $4.84, which is, you know, enough of a difference that I'm gonna write it down. All right, let us grab our tally. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the, the blickening. There we go. All right, so we're going with their price. Since it is an exclusive, we're going with Blick's price since that's commonly available and there's a significant price difference. We're going with their price because it's the same price. Bowie is hungry. He is neglected. No one feeds him. Always hungry. We're going with Blix price for the Windsor and Newton brush because that's like half the price. And another thing to consider is Art Snacks buys if they can if they can do an exclusive deal with Van Gogh, they can buy these things in bulk. So they're probably paying the wholesale price, which is why I don't feel bad comparing them against Blix prices. For Zazen, we've got 2.39. And then for Albrecht, oh wait, we've got the microperm. We're already nearing what I pay. I mean I paid half the going rate for this box, so then we've got the two Albrecht data. And then we've got their washi tape. Okay, so even taking into consideration Blix prices, which are generally cheaper, sometimes significantly so, the only one I'm kind of ooky about is the this. And you know, it's an exclusive thing, so I'm gonna kind of give it a pass, especially because even Blick is all over the place with their 12 color palettes. This box's cost, if you were to buy it from Dick Blick or a close approximation, would be $93.62. Whoa, sorry, $93.62. And that's going with like a mix of their prices and Blick prices. And the box itself is like $89. And we're not even talking about if you get value from the tutorials, if you know what I mean. So I would say you definitely get your money's worth for the box just in terms of the materials they're including. 
So if you are thinking about this box and you're not sure if it's gonna be like a good value for your money or if it's a fair value for your money, I would say at least based on this box, yes. And in general, my experiences with Art Snacks is that Art Snacks is pretty fair about their prices versus what you get. Okay, so the microperm is indeed waterproof and I'm just waiting on a couple things to dry on the page prior and then we can basically wrap things up. So I like the colors in this set. I look forward to putting this through the student grade showdown. I have reviewed Van Gogh watercolors in the past. So if you want to check that out, you can. But I mean, since I've got it anyway, I might as well do a student grade showdown on it, especially because this could be a chance at some art supply redemption for Van Gogh since I've changed as an artist. Perhaps some of their formulation has changed. Um, the brushes, they were all fine brushes. I'm not happy about the price point for the King Art brush, but this was my first time getting to play with a dagger style brush and I liked it. I thought it was fun. Um, it certainly added a different kind of brush stroke to my repertoire, which was cool. I learned something from their tutorial, which is really cool. Um, I was impressed with the Zen brush. I'm going to probably pick up a few more of these and give them a shot. And what else? This one, the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor, it, it's eh, it's eh for me. It's nothing I haven't tried before. It's not significantly different than their Cotman brushes in my opinion. You might find it more ergonomic. I didn't necessarily find it more ergonomic. So that one's a little bit of an eh for me. I have talked about the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers in the past. Generally, I like them. I think they're some of the better watercolor markers, so I was happy to see them included in this set. I believe, I'm going to double check, but I believe these are colors I have, so I will probably donate these to a local art program after double checking just so that somebody gets some immediate use out of them. The Microperm pen impressed me in that it can write on washi tape and you can then paint on it and it won't just you know wipe off so that's actually pretty cool and their washi tape is cheap washi tape um i think they pack in washi tape every time they do it and i think it's that you can tape down your work or create masking techniques so i don't really have any complaints with them doing that it's fine and i'm you know i think i'm going to check out their at least check out their tutorials their tutorial live streams because I you know I there's definitely room for me to learn and I do miss hanging out with other artists I miss hanging they do two to three tutorial live streams for every box cool. if I understand correctly and which is pretty cool or... um I think it is generally dread pirate brie but they might bring in guests I've never this is my second watercolor snacks box and I've never they're you know, and I'm sure their their live streams are available on demand. It just never occurred to me. All right, let us see. Hey, okay, so you guys see it might be a little difficult to see. Let me double check. Okay, we got some seepage right here. Let's see how it compares against the MT. We didn't get any seepage with the MT. That's usually my experience with the MT washi tape is no no problems with seepage. So it's fine, but um, if you do get seepage using their washi tape, just keep in mind it's not you, it's their washi tape has a tendency to do that. Now, the only thing I wasn't super other than this that I wasn't super excited about was the Strathmore I've used these before. They're just not my cup of tea. I know people who like them. They are good for pen and ink and they are good for like light watercolor washes. But if you want to like put a lot of pigment on the paper, this just isn't really the best pick. But it's a great affordable alternative to moleskin. The paper is a little bit heavier than moleskin watercolor paper and it's still a pretty compact size. And you can break the spine so that it lays flat. So it does have its place and it does have its pros. It's just not something that I'm usually super excited about. 
So, I think that about wraps up this watercolor snacks. I'm not going to continue the subscription just because $89 a quarter is a lot of money in my opinion. And uh, I'm already putting that money towards doing the student grade showdown. But if you are in love with watercolor, but maybe newer to watercolor, or if you enjoy and can afford these kind of curated picks that also come with curated tutorials, which I think is a cool idea, I think you definitely get your money's worth from it. And for some people to get them making art, they do need that combination of curated art supplies plus curated lessons together, like if you were taking a physical class. And I think that could be a great option for those of us who don't necessarily live in an area where we have access to in-person watercolor classes. So um, yeah, even though I'm not going to continue it at this time, I don't have anything negative really to say about it and I'll definitely check out the live streams and hopefully it'll be a good experience. So oh yay. Uh, Cindy said they have two separate lines in the Zen, the mixed media and the watercolor. I have a couple of both lines. I've tried the mixed media and I, was, I bought it for an acrylic thing I was doing for Art Squad and it just wasn't stiff enough for acrylic. So. Um, I think I will probably pick up some more of the watercolor ones though because this was a pretty passable synthetic watercolor brush and I'm always on the lookout for good watercolor brushes for classes and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out this evening for spending an hour and a half of your precious Friday evening. I really appreciated it. It was good to see you guys. I miss you guys. Um, I really, we, how many rooms do we have left? Two, two rooms, right? <laughs> No, I'm counting the hall. Master bath. Front right. You're right. That's okay, like so we've got three rooms left. Yeah. So that'll probably be another month before I can start streaming again. But it's it's coming. It's coming. I'm looking forward to it. I want to get back to doing those watercolor flower paintings with you guys because we're like we were like four in, and then I moved, and and the hurricane hit, and I just never got back to it, which was a bummer. And it'd be really cool to do some of those watercolor stash buster bookmarks with you guys. Um, yes, it was fun hanging out again. So hopefully in a month we can hang out again more regularly. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And uh, I'll have a video out for you guys tomorrow. It's going to be something in the student grade showdown, probably. It is probably going to be the deep. No, I haven't sent that to patrons yet. I have to take a look at what's, what's hanging out for me to share. Bye, guys.